Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the channel and in this one, we are going to discuss some of the most interesting and recent HBM subtitle in the latest version of the mod, which can be downloaded from GitHub. So the first update comes in the form of the research reactor, which was previously the small nuclear reactor and the breeding reactor. Next up, we have these large energy pylons and the substations, which can be used to transfer energy at a very cheap cost hundreds of blocks away. And finally, there are the time bomb, which have a working GUI and different timers. And yeah, they're pretty cool. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. Alright, so we start this video with the research reactor and the breeding reactor. So the research reactor is what the small nuclear reactor used to be. It still looks the same, but the GUI is completely different. So the tooltip says, that the research reactor has to be submerged in water in order to cool down and the neutron flux can be shared with other breeding reactors. Then we have the dial for flux, heat and the control rod. And the control rods can be controlled manually like this or they can also be automatically controlled which we'll get into a little bit later. Next up we have the breeding reactor, still looks the same but has a different GUI and the tooltip says that the reactor can receive neutron flux from adjacent reactors. So if I place down a research reactor like this, then it can now share its flux with the breeding reactor. So that is the design that we need to follow. So I have made this little 7x7 area and I'm going to completely cover it in water so that the research reactor can cool down using this water. And as for the fuel for this research reactor, we have the plate fuel. Now the plate fuel can be crafted using any of the tier 4 or higher engines. So if I go to the anvil right now and type in plate fuel, then we can see all the different types of fuel that we can use in the research reactor. They are the uranium-233, uranium-235, MOX fuel, plutonium-239, sherbidium, and finally the radium-226 beryllium, which is simply a neutron source. So let's try this reactor out, right? So first things first, I'm going to place down the fuel plates in all the available slots like this, and I'm going to use uranium-233 for this video. Now if I pull out all the fuel rods by 100%, you will see that actually nothing happened. Now why is that? That's because in order to start the reaction, you need to actually place down any neutron source, just like we did in the RBM the reactor. So if I start placing down the neutron source, which is the radium-226 beryllium, in all these four positions like this, then all the plates in the reactor will start basically a chain reaction yeah they'll start reacting with each other and the temperature went up to 350 degrees celsius and there is Cherenko radiation which is pretty cool actually now if i place down a breeding reactor adjacent to it this reactor will share the entire flux that the reactor is giving off and it can process different recipes according to the flux it receives so for example I have the uranium-238 rods, if I place them down, then these rods in the breeding reactor will be converted into reactor-grade plutonium bombs. I'm just gonna wait for the reaction to complete and you can see the result for yourself. There we go. So we have obtained reactor-grade plutonium bomb from uranium-238. But there is a bit of problem with this process. Now, if I break this or okay, look, the temperature right now is 458 degrees Celsius. If I get rid of the breeding reactor, then it dropped down to 350. So every breeding reactor that you place takes up the water and therefore increases the amount of heat. Now, if the heat level reaches above 1000 degrees Celsius, your reactor is going to melt down. So in order to prevent this, we are going to use the reactor remote sensor and the reactor remote block which kind of works like the automatic rbmk rod if you want an analogy so place down the reactor remote sensor in here and that will essentially shut down the reaction because we have not set the parameter right now now these parameters are very similar to the automatic rbmk control rod we have the level at maximum heat the level at minimum heat and finally the max heat and the minimum heat so Let's test this out, right? So I'm gonna set the level at maximum heat, the level of the control rods, to be at, let's say, 50%. That should be a good number right now. 
then the level at minimum heat that should be 100 percent now let's set these values itself the maximum heat i want is 900 degrees celsius and the minimum i want is 500 degrees celsius and let's save it now as soon as you do that the rods as you can see came out completely that's because we have to start the reaction again so this kind of works in a very similar fashion as the rbmk reactor does so once the reactor has started the rods will be controlled automatically they'll go up and down according to the temperature and this will avoid a complete meltdown of the research reactor which does not look very pretty you can change how the control rods will basically act according to the temperature using these functions on the left hand side the linear the parabolic and the hyperbolic functions so if i place down another breeding reactor the temperature will go up therefore the control rods will come inside the reactor in order to control the temperature now i'm gonna show you guys how the meltdown of this reactor looks like because i know some of you guys are definitely gonna try it so by placing down a fourth breeding reactor the, yes so yeah the re, the blast of this the meltdown yeah it's definitely big so be very careful about that so that was all for the research reactor and the breeding reactor now let's move on to the large electricity pylon so it looks like this it has four connection points in total and it can be connected using a cable drum now the large electricity pylon can be connected to a substation and also to another large electricity pylon now both of these have four connection points in total and the substation can also transfer energy to your grid or other cable blocks so this large energy pylon it has a range of total 100 blocks so i'm just gonna make a quick 100 block line here in order to show you guys what happens when the blocks are not in range so right now there are a total of 100 blocks in here and if i place down two pylons which are just at the outer limit of these blocks then you will see that they will actually not connect so yeah as it says wire error now as soon as i bring these pylons in range that is shift them by one block each they will connect beautifully there goes the other pylon right here and there so these have connected so this is a very cheap process in order to transfer energy through long distances as the cable drum is not consumed when you basically connect to structures like this then there is the substation the substation can also be connected to another substation or another pylon and it has a range of 20 blocks so yeah the large electricity pylon it has a range of 100 blocks and the substation has a range of only 20 blocks so that is how you connect two substations but the main use of substation is to actually connect it with a large electricity pylon so that you can actually connect your grid with it so i have connected one electricity or sorry one substation to a large electricity pylon and there goes the another one so if i now connect a power source to this grid right here that is by placing an energy storage block or by bringing in an energy cable and i'm gonna power this block with a self-charging battery and now if we quickly go to the other side and place down another energy storage block then that block will receive the entire energy off so yeah that's a pretty cheap way or a pretty efficient way to transfer power along long distances Finally, let's take a look at the time bomb, which is crafted using three dynamite sticks and one tape. Now the time bomb can be right clicked onto any block, horizontal or vertical, and it will stick to the surface. Now if destroyed, yep, it will go off. So yeah, don't do that. Now once you stick the time bomb, if you right click, then the timer will change. And once you are satisfied with the time, just shift right click. In order to activate it now in between if you destroy it then yes it will go off 
So if the bomb is destroyed, it will go off nonetheless. Now this makes for some really interesting breaching purposes or yeah, a breaching bomb, you can say. Stick it at someone's door and there. It's a pretty good way to say hello. <laughs> so that's the bomb. And another thing that you can do with it is actually use a detonator. So it works with a normal detonator and a multi detonator as well. Now, in order to deactivate the bomb, you can use a high tech diffusing device. So if you right click with the high tech bomb diffusing device, the timer will stop. Now, if you destroy the bomb, then yes, it will go off like this. So in order to completely diffuse a bomb or completely get rid of it, I should say, you have to right click twice. So by right clicking once, the timer will stop and by right clicking again, the bomb will drop like this and you can then pick it up and then use it as your own. So that was all I had for this video guys. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, do smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel. Peace out.